In the previous video, we looked at how to derive the formula for finding the distance between two complex numbers. And this formula, written in terms of the complex numbers z1 and z2, essentially asks us to find the difference between the real parts, a1 and a2, and we will take the absolute value of that so that we get a positive number and we will square that, and then add that to the difference between the imaginary parts, b1 and b2, though again, we'll take the absolute value of that and square that. And after adding both those quantities together, we will take a square root of everything to get the distance between these two points. And ultimately, this formula is very similar to the distance formula between points on the xy coordinate plane dealing with real numbers, but it's simply an application of the Pythagorean theorem. And this is the alternate way to write the formula that you're finding the difference between the real parts. Again, you're finding the absolute value of that and squaring it, and you're finding the absolute value of the imaginary parts and squaring that and adding those together, you will then take a square root of everything. So these are just equivalent ways of writing the same formula. And it's important to remember that you can switch the order on these. In fact, that's one of the main reasons that the absolute value is there, so that if you switch the order and you end up getting a negative difference, then the absolute value bars will make it positive. So we could write this as a2 minus a1 and b2 minus b1, and similarly for z1 and z2, you can switch the order of those as well. So with this formula, let's now look at an example to get some practice on actually using it. So let's say in our example problem that we have a complex number z1 equal to 3 minus 4i, and we have a complex number z2 equal to minus 6 plus 2i. And we just need to find the distance between these two points. And of course, we can use the geometric approach where we graph both of these, we draw a line between them, and then decompose that into a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem. But this formula essentially does all of that for us so that we don't have to draw a picture. So let's just plug everything into the formula. And it's just important to recognize what our key variables are. We essentially just need to find the difference between the real parts. That's this part of our formula. And we also need to find the difference between the imaginary parts which is this part of our formula. So we could label these if we want. This is a1 and b1, that's minus four in this case. And a2 is minus six and b2 is two. So the distance between these points is the square root of this expression here. We will find the absolute value of the difference between the real parts first. We can do three minus negative six, and we'll square that. Though, again, we could switch this order. We can do the absolute value of minus six minus three and square that. And you'll notice in both cases, you get nine. Since three plus six is nine and minus six minus three, that's negative nine, but the absolute value bars will make it positive nine. So either way you wanna do this, you will get nine and then square that. And likewise, for the imaginary parts, we can do b1 minus b2, so minus 4 minus 2, and we will square that. And again, if you switch this and do 2 minus negative 4, in both cases, you will get positive 6. So let me delete this, and we will continue working. So let's now simplify everything. We have that d, the distance between these two complex numbers is the square root of this expression. And we have three plus six, which is nine. And when taking the absolute value of a positive number, it remains positive, so we will square that. And over here, we have minus four minus two, which is negative six, and the absolute value will make it positive six, and we will square that. Now, nine times nine is 81, six times six is 36. So let's add these together. We can move the one to 36, making it 37, and 80 plus 37 is 117. 
and 117, or the square root of 117, can be simplified. So if we make a tree with 117, it is divisible by 3, and 3 goes into this 39 times, and 39 is also divisible by 3, goes into that 13 times. So 117 is really 3 squared multiplied by 13. So we have a perfect square, meaning we can actually simplify this. So the square root of 117 can be rewritten as the square root of 3 squared multiplied by 13. And we can separate this into two square roots multiplied together since we have a product under the square root. And the square root of 3 squared, or the square root of 9, is simply 3. So we can rewrite the square root of 117 as 3 multiplied by the square root of 13. So this right here will be our fully simplified answer. And again, this is all just equal to the distance between those two complex numbers, which we started with here.